So, I believe the Casio AE1200 is the best watch under $30 ever made. Let's take a look why. Packed with value, it's no surprise why the Casio is so popular. World time, stopwatch, dual time display, alarms, fully waterproof, steel bracelet, lights on the dial. This watch is packed with features that even the Swiss giants can't compete with. That's nothing new, however, when it comes to Casio. Since the quartz crisis, Casio have been the leaders when it comes to digital watches. Casio has sold millions of watches around the world because becoming a household name. Time and time again, they managed to make something so affordable, so good. This particular model is one of their best offerings. Now let's take a look at exactly why. When we take a deeper dive into the watch's main feature, it becomes clear why the watch is so special. World time features on mechanical watches are usually only reserved for the super exclusive collectors that have more money than cents, usually on watches costing tens of thousands. Then when we add in the stopwatch, multiple alarm functionality, and the 100 meters water resistance, even the most expensive elusive watches of the world simply cannot compete with these specifications. Factor in this watch costs multiple of thousands less than these watches and we only have one winner. Now of course this statement is a little whimsical. This isn't taking into account the mechanics of the watch, the materials, the watch being handmade and so on, but it's a nice little comparison to think about nonetheless. So the model we're going to be taking a look at today is the Casio AE1200 WHD, a retro inspired watch often referred to as the Casio Royale or the Casio World Time. Most watches have a nickname of some kind. We see this with the Rolex Holt, Seiko Tuna, and this brand even has a nickname for their whole range of watches, pure crap. Casio Royale's nickname though is rather unique. The AE1200 is labelled the Royale because it resembles a vintage Seiko model that featured in a James Bond movie, Octopussy. Rather strange, I know. The AE1200 was released in 2012, although with the vintage look, you'd think it's from the 80s. So let's take a deeper look at what makes this watch so special. One reason the AE1200 is such a fan favourite is because of its wearing dimensions. It manages to suit almost any size wrist, looking large with the 42mm diameter, but wearing well with the 45mm look to look. Of course, the benefit of a large face is the amount of information we gain in the display. Speaking of, in the top left, we have a traditional analog display that always displays the home time. To the right of that, we have a world map showing the time zone that you are currently looking at. And beneath that, a digital display where we use and see most of the functionality of the watch. The four labeled pushes help navigate the functions with dual lights, even helping in the darkness. There's certainly a learning curve when it comes to operation, one however that is rather enjoyable. Now let's take a closer look at the heart of the Royale. The Casio module 3299 is simply one of a kind. Having a 10 year battery life, 100th of a second stopwatch, countdown timer and five individual alarms, 31 different world time zones, automatic calendar until the year 2099 and LED illumination all packed into a 100 meters water resistance case. Speaking of, a $30 watch having 100 meters water resistance resistance isn't unheard of, but it's certainly a rare occurrence. This watch is able to go in the pool, join you in the shower, probably even capable of some snorkeling and some sea swimming. Quite incredible when you consider how many points of entry this watch has. Most Casio offerings around this price have 50 meters or less, so it's a massive bonus having this. When we take a look at the materials used, that's when we begin to see where Casio makes their money. The case is made of resin, finished to look like steel. Some edges are a little bit rough and there's this weird line through the center of the case. However, the four pushes are made of steel for longevity of the friction based parts. The case back is also made of stainless steel with screws holding it to the back of the case. As typical with Casio, we see an acrylic crystal. This will easily pick up scratches over time, nothing that can't be sorted with a bit of polywatch though. We actually have a steel bracelet used on this particular model, which fits the aesthetics of the watch very well. The end links flare out to give a more seamless transition on the wrist. The bracelet is only folded links, usually having a full on wall with your arm hairs. This one though actually wears very comfortably and a seemingly made piece with the follicles. The clasp is signed Casio, a two button deployant with four levels of micro adjustment. Overall, the wearing experience is cheap, yes, but comfortable. Speaking of the bracelet, having 80 millimeter lugs makes this watch easy to swap straps and switch up the style. I've seen plenty of people rock the Royale on a NATO, which looks great. Alternatively, leather straps look top tier too. The watch can sometimes look a little bit top heavy on 80 millimeter offerings though, but you can pick up straps specifically made for the Royale, which the transition is less jarring on. The AE1200 is one of those watches where swapping the straps is enjoyable. It breathes a new freshness into the wearing experience. So the watch has great specs, but what about the design? Is it just too weird? When we take a step back and think about the style of the watch, it's clear the aesthetics is quite vintage, looking very casual and extra techy. It's a watch that you would imagine on a watch nerd's wrist, although Casio definitely already have a watch for this. The design cues are unique, recognizable, and an acquired taste. Thankfully, the colors are muted, so the watch doesn't look like a 
toy, something that could have easily happened if the watch was more flamboyant. Speaking of, if you would prefer something a little bit different, Casio has plenty of other versions of the Royale with different case, strap and accent colours. Now, it isn't all sweet and rosy, every watch has its downsides. The AE1200 by no means is the most luxurious of watches. It's cheaply made with the plastic case and folded links bracelet. The case and bracelet colour doesn't exactly match. The analogue display in the top left can be hard to read at a glance. The same can be said for the world map. As the search button is in the bottom right, I found that sometimes the wrist can accidentally change the time zone, which definitely throws you off occasionally. Like how the hell is it 9pm? I only just woke up. There's rather a lot of text on the dial of the Royale, already adding to the busy look, most of which are the features of the watch, usually seen on the watch's case back. However, that's about it. There's nothing glaringly wrong with the AE1200, especially considering the price. These are all acceptable. So when we think about who this watch is for, it becomes a little bit of a puzzle. I mean, you'd think that the design language would be dividing. However, this watch is incredibly popular. In terms of gender, this is without question a unisex watch. I think the retro design really helps this suit everybody. No matter what your style is, it fits. Whether it's more casual with a hoodie, wearing it for work with a shirt, or going playing some tennis in shorts and sneakers, it never looks out of place. As mentioned earlier, Casio have some offerings when it comes to case colours and straps. There's a rose gold version, an all black version, and even some khaki green options too. The versions with the resin straps are also great. They wear incredibly well and are also comfortable on wrist. Speaking from experience, the Royale is a one of a kind watch. Here's why. See, typically when looking at buying a watch, it's worth seeing what you can also get for a similar price. However, the reason this watch stands out is simply because there's nothing else like it. Even huge brands like Seiko, Citizen and Timex don't produce anything close to the AE1200. So the value on offer here is unbeatable. Even when we compare any $30 watch by any other brand in the world, nothing comes close. One thing I have noticed with the AE1200 is that it seems to sneak its way into any respectable watch collection. Many Rolex or Omega Tudor owners seem to own a Casio Royale, and for the reasons mentioned, it more than holds its own. The same can be said for my collection too. Even though I own a beautiful Oris Big Crown 3 Pilots watch, the Tissot PRX and the Orient Kamasu, just to mention a few, the AE1200 seems to get more wrist time than any of them. I believe this is down to the comfort and ease of the wearing experience. The colourway also matches anything that I decide to wear that day. All of my watches stay in the watch box except one. The Casio World Time is the only watch that stays on my bedside table. Take from that what you will. So in my opinion, every respectable watch collection should feature at least one Casio. They're a staple in any collection, regardless of price. Casio watches make for the ultimate beta watch. For me, the World Time is the best Casio that money can buy. The look is so unique and recognisable. Having an iconic watch in the collection validates the choices and rounds off the collection nicely. I've tried a couple of different Casios in the past and always gave them away to family members and tried something else. However, I picked up the AE1200 over a year ago, and since then, I haven't even thought about getting rid of it once. It's fulfilled my digital watch needs and then some. It fits my wrist perfectly and I love the grab and go aspect of the watch. No matter how I'm feeling, where I'm going or what I'm wearing, the Casio Royale is always a safe choice and is my trusty Rusty. So for $30, this is unquestionably the best watch ever made. Pick one up and you will not regret it. I'll leave an affiliate Amazon link in the description. If you fancy something more traditional for a similar price, check out my review here on the Laurus Titanium Fieldwatch.